This is uh, Colin Cooper, by the way. C W O P E R. Okay. How important is it to see your county in an All Ireland football final? Well, it's very important, really, because they haven't been there for 11 years. They've won it four in a row before, but they haven't done it in 11 years, so they need, really need this one. Colm, tell me about your links with football. We have four brothers in the senior team, so I have a lot to live up to, really. I was always in Crocs junior team. The coach came along didn't like and I suppose he was to be coming out there the first thing you hear in the morning with a ball hopping. I suppose he was only about four or five at that stage like you know. He never done anything on the ball in his hand. He'd be throwing the ball at the curb. He would never miss the curb to come straight back into his hands. Colin's a lovely boy like, you know. You never seen without a ball. Never. His parents, Mike and Maureen, and we all moved into the houses at the same time. They all grew up together, my children and, and, and the Coopers. There were seven of them there. And they were always out playing together from morning to night. And Colm always had a ball in his head. And he hitting it off the gable of the houses. You go up to Fitzgerald Stadium or Park of Cave or up to Crow Park and you look looking down the column, see a boy from across the road playing, playing in the green and gold. We're overcome with pride and emotion. Our channel is his, this is his home, this is his place. And I say, this is where he grew up, this is where he learned to play football. Colin would have been dear much to the boys, right? And uh, you were the two girls in Geraldine and Karen. Sports mad, of course. You would have no problem finding them anyway. They'd be above the field if you were looking for them. You couldn't meet a nicer family in your life. They were fabulous people. Living in Archanavudi, or officially known as Archan to the locals, it was great, you know, there was a gang of kids my own age around. There were some younger and some older. We just played every sport. Every evening when everybody was home from, from school, it was eat your dinner, get your homework done, and it was up to the field then for two or three hours every night. And it was just so much fun. It allowed huge freedom, and I think very much creativity and imagination as well, which at that age, you find and you have loads of as well. And I think I actually, embraced all that and probably developed me as a player and shaped me as a player. So when I went out on the field, I was just, I was always thinking instinctively of what's going on around me and how I could impact and create around me. So I think that largely came from my upbringing and spending hours and hours out on the pitch and out in, in the estate. The two key things to it from Colm's point of view were the greens. There's a green at the front and there's a green at the back. And it brings home the simplicity of an Irish childhood back in those years. But that's where he grew up, and that's where he felt the first tackles that hurt him and felt the first little ripples of bravery come into his own body. So that's where probably he honed most of his skills there, to know if you could survive in that battlefield against all the fellas. So he learned to look after himself. Never forgotten where he's come from. He's always come from a, a working class estate in Killarney. He was just one of the boys. My mom was from Cremon, back near Killorglin. I was the last child along, so probably the spoiled one as well. My dad was from Glenflesk. His house was the last house in the Kerry County Bounds before Cork. So there was always a bit of stick with the Cork fans that I could have been on the other side. One of my fondest memories is that on any given weeknight, myself and himself would get into the car and I'd have a ball under my arm and we were going after some match, even if it wasn't a Dr Crokes match. Somewhere in East Kerry there would be a match on and we'd just take off and go. He loved it so much and I think he loved meeting people as well. And I was part of that, you know, and even, even, it's, I'm getting flashbacks now thinking about it, so they were great memories. 
Sometimes I think in life you find what's for you. And I knew very, very early that the GA was going to be central to my life. Savlin Nuidig Nokado, a Hahig Colum Cooper, Parker Crokig, then Giedewer. Law are of a Vetra Hard, a Gimmertown Lishna Crokig, a Glehe Canish the Globe, a Gunner Homan Tomas Davish, or a Clea. He had a couple of brothers on that team, and Gooch was their mascot, this tiny little fella in the tracksuit. But what that tells you is the Cooper family were so deeply immersed in Dr. Crokes. I was a training every night with my brother, so whether the ball was going over the bar or into another field, I was the one to get it. So I was around the dressing room all during the year. I remember the chairman and secretary of Crokes coming to my house and maybe a week before the match, saying we'd love you to be a mascot on the day. You've been involved with the team all the year. Um, we think it's something you'd love to do. And quite literally, I didn't sleep that night with excitement. I just remember it like it was yesterday, getting on the train in Killarney, my bag over my shoulder, I got a new tracksuit. Um, still have that tracksuit at home. 60 minutes to decide where ultimate honour goes. The Kingdom of Kerry are here, the city of Dublin. At that time, Kerry probably warranted the top table of the GA. My first trip ever to Coke Park. Danny Cooper, with an effort that goes over the bar. That's a very good point. Danny and what makes it extra special is Dr. Crokes winning on the day. They're just great memories that they'll never leave you. At that time, the dressing rooms were in the canal inn, they were in the corner. And I remember coming out and thinking to myself, I'm going to play here someday. What about yourself? What about your ambition? Well, hopefully I'll go on to play for Kerry someday. But um, I'll win a couple of county titles of Crokes and a couple of, couple of medals of Crokes and one of the best in hopefully. I was probably smaller than everyone growing up, so I was easily pushed off the ball. But what, what I did have was my skill level was always really, really high. It's more difficult to find someone with a footballing brain. You can work with someone in the gym. You can, you can do core exercises with them. You can't tell them how to make the right decision in a match or kick left and right and and see have the vision of what's going on around them. So give me that small kid all the time. And I, I, I and that was me. He kind of broke onto the senior team around his 17th birthday with the club. We played on Gwales in the county final and they had a lot of very good players, Daryl Canada, the O'Shea's, the McGarrels. I guess um, led Og, led on a Hanny Yafad, been the skill in their father gave you Vonnegut and Drawson. Kerry County football was no place for the faint hearted back then, and they played in some really wretched days, but of course he had his four brothers on the team as well. And this little wraith of a lad suddenly became a factor for Dr. Crokes, and that catapulted him into the consciousness for Kerry. I was up in Cork, I don't even know what I was doing in Cork on the day, and I got a phone call from a number I didn't know. Hi, Colin, party here. And uh, I was kind of thinking to myself, is someone, is someone trying to take me on here or what's going on, but he said, yeah, come in Tuesday night. We'd like you to come in training with us for a while. Of course, there's huge joy in me. I couldn't get, ho I couldn't wait to get home to Killarney and tell, tell my parents. My father was kind of very unassuming, so he mightn't say much. He was kind of maybe a bit taken back and surprised when I, when I said it to him. My mother's reaction was a little bit different. She was there. Jesus, I don't know, it was a bit early for you to be going in playing with these big lads. The most nervous part for me was, where will I sit in the dressing room or will I take someone else's seat or will he even know who I am? I remember a night in Tralee, Paul Gallivan was in there and we were playing maybe a, a bit of a practice match and myself and Paul kind of went at it a little bit, you know, and um, we didn't know each other great at that, at that point, but I was going to crash into everything because I couldn't live with the regret of going in training with Kerry and not giving it everything. If I was worried about everything that was going on around me, I wouldn't survive. And that probably comes from the background of growing up the way I did and playing against the older kids. 
Now, physically, he wasn't fully formed, of course. It took him a few years to, to fill out and to not look like just a scrawny child that, that fell in off the street. But football-wise, he arrived fully formed. That is delightful football. That's a goal in four points. Achan Mercher Achomus on Hied Hemel Hogent. Agus Eertrain Art Wache, a Wolle Sachwa Kanish Pelle, a Ravil Sado. We had so many chances in that match. We were up four points at half time. Owen Brosnan, an ambitious ball in towards Cooper. Gooch looking for a score. Trying to go this way and that. And he's kicked up beauty. Things were going really, really well for us, but could possibly be an up more. Whatever happened in the second half, the wheels came off a little bit. It was a nice hot afternoon. It's quite cold and breezy now. This is inside towards McGrain. It comes back nicely. It's the first goal and it's scored by Oshie McConville. But all of a sudden, the score gives them oxygen. When they go forward, now they score. When we run forward, we're kicking wides, poor decisions and, and things like that. Once again, it is Stephen McDonald and he's put it over the bar. It's his third point. It's all over. Fantastic result for him. How we we grab the ball start point to match again. I guess we see the heen and son. Can he come as a vice? I guess can doubt Nurhan on 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 last time the gooch or you know I guess we we the heen a counter. I guess and son. How we see the we see good deal or father reach. Colin Cooper popping up at top of the right there against uh, John White. Decent kick. Great accuracy. The advent of our man in 2002, Tyrone in 2003, well, they set Kerry back initially. Kerry, 32 Ireland titles, Tyrone, none. How relevant is tradition right now? Probably we shocked Kerry maybe that day, I'd imagine. They probably didn't expect that sort of intensity. Uh, Mickey would always been a great man about bringing intensity to the game, and we really had a show it that day because we always knew what, what Kerry are bringing to the table, so we had a, had a match him. And, they had some magnificent players, like, and we had to really be on top of our game. Those that worked out that day, that the famous scene in front of the, the Hogan stand, the boys tackling, tackling like mad, and that really set the tone for that day. Darryl Kinnada, look at the four players from Toronto surrounding him. It was just a tough year, 2003, for us, but we were just slightly off on the day, and that was the emergence of Tyrone. McGuigan kicking, and he's put it over the bar. And the fans are cheering on their team. And Kerry have no response so far. And we just couldn't live with them in that semi-final. Again, that was part of the, the, the growing up piece for me and the development piece to say, well, if you have aspirations to win North Ireland, you've got to live this game. But I think those two years of hurt really fixated me on, on what I needed to do going forward. It taught me you have to work for everything you get. You've got to work hard and nothing will ever be handed to you on a plate. Me as a person, I needed to become tougher, harder, and a better footballer. And I think the hurt of that drove me on for the years ahead. There's expectation the whole time in Kerry. And that was probably something maybe I underestimated when I started playing with Kerry was that OK, you can go in and play. But as the years go on, the pressure intensifies, you're probably more aware of it around you. It's just because people in Kerry care so much about Gaelic football. I remember talking to Wishy Fogarty, the great Radio Kerry broadcaster one time, and he said, like, in Kerry, family comes first, football comes second, and everything else comes after that. To be the focal point of that, as Colin Cooper was for so long, that everybody looks up to, that everybody wants to do well, that everybody feels protective of, must have been an incredible way of life for him. Hard to believe this is his third season playing senior championship football. He's a wonderful, prodigious talent. In 2004, I put more pressure on myself to perform. So I was just determined that, look, I got to win out on the middle and it has to be sooner rather than later. And I, was, I looked around the dressing room at the, the team I had. I goes, we need to be in Crow Park in September. It's not a good thing to do with the team. It's not a good thing to do with the team. It's not a good thing to do with the team. 
agus sneam boavige that's a great block by Shane Ryan on his first scoop for everything's going right for the kingdom and Cooper knocks it over the bar in impressive fashion and my three games in Croke Park that year, I think the, probably the graph kept rising, I got better and better, you know. For the final, Darrow Shea was out and Seamus Minor were out. And usually a Kerry team going into the final without those two guys, big questions would be asked about by Hook or by Cook, we were going to win this. Everybody came to Croke Park thinking, Mayo Kerry, could this be Mayo's year? And he just said no. He just ended the game very early. I remember the ball being out around the middle of the field. Eamon Fitzmaurice. Sticking with the tactic of just going long. Eamon just bulldozed one in on top of us. We were a great team. We were a great team. We were a great team. I remember just getting off the ground and I knew Pat Kelly was, was close enough to me. And I knew once the stuck, goal was on. That's the street footballer again coming out of me. I learned that in Archinavudi, just knowing my surroundings and what was going on around me. And I was just going off and tearing down a goal, and I knew he wouldn't catch me. Huge run down towards Cooper. What a lovely catch. Beautiful fluency. He can get a goal here. And he does. Agus Stolum on Stichur Schenkad, Stach Ischl, Ding Kuhl, Vishay, just Doch Retrofad. Just emotion in and jumping in the air in Croke Park, like... It was, Jesus, I scored a goal in Croke Park, but then it was back, get back into position. That's my favourite goal, because it had everything. It had the catch, the little basketball pass inside, and the roll into the corner, which is probably one of my trademark scores. I don't tend to blast the ball too often. It's his fifth goal in championship football. Coach Cooper, he exposed their limitations. He ran through and built it in past Peter Burke. So that's a long time ago now, but still my favourite goal, so I haven't topped it yet. Late on, I, I think I might kick the point, and I just looked up to the big screen near Hill 16 and said, Oh, we're good here, we're good. My uncle Dan got onto the field that day. No steward was able to catch him anyway, he was on so quick, so just sharing those memories with your teammates that you trained all year with, the, the disappointment and hurt of the two years previous, that you were back, like you were number one in the country. I remember running onto the field, getting a mohog and uh, it was magical times, you know, to think that he'd come through all that hard work. We never kind of pat each other on the back too much as a family, like, but you, you can feel it in days like that. And it doesn't always need to be said, but you can feel it. and. Just sitting down having a beer with them after and saying, you know what, this is, this is what it's all about, you know. Probably gave me a taste of what I, I wanted more of this. I tasted it now, I need, I need more. That's fantastic. Any kid in Kerry dreams about winning in Ireland, you know. From the first time you kick a ball, like it's all about the centre stage in Kerry, and thankfully we've done it. And heading back to Clare, you know, so I'm really looking forward to it. Fayere, the Ring Lord, Bunjamaha Column, Agazena Hora, Ile Aden, Le Kerry. Ach a gavil se kuig, vi tiro in rom perished, ag zid the direct bobavola er in the richte, bout to vainella. By the time the 05 final came around, Gooch was the hottest forward in the country. So it was obvious Tyrone were going to have a plan for him, and that plan seemed to be to try and unsettle him in any way possible. They obviously had done their homework on me. They wanted to get inside my head a little bit, and they really wanted to test me physically and mentally. So no better man than Ricey to do that. Ricey would come in and he'd have a, a few words to say, and look, I get that. They were they were coming in. They saw me as a threat to them. He faded in on all the Harrington shot. Shot that on Gooch. Here off the full of Cooper. Pakistan on Kane score, and it could be Kaddish the Hayden. Vin Gooch, we should all know to all her fad and Lawson. The Gooch and Karen Nansen was Pascal McConnell. Um, personally, I'm going to say I didn't see it at the time. Uh, you know, uh, I was busy maybe running after somebody else. I suppose you got a finger in the eye and maybe that curtailed his influence that day. Intentional or not intentional, I don't know, but I got a poke in the eye. Um, it affected my eyesight for probably up to half time, if I'm being honest. 
hanig an cúl bar amach nádó cad go díor chéad hit amach ach fórshean bhuile. So fair play the Tyrone, you know, you know the kind of it has to all. I guess ach gan daut nor nach river or im lór in a gart chrúshéasin stach gomorán. And if you factor in Peter Canavan's goal, all happening in that in that crazy ten or ten or fifteen minutes, it was a stage of the game that cost us. And it was it was really disappointing for for me and for everybody else because the season had gone so well up to, up to then, and it's just it's like someone taking the carpet from under you. You know, you're just you're swept aside. Canavan. I wouldn't go down the line of blaming referees or goalkeepers or anything. At the end of the day, our performance wasn't good enough on the day. Two thousand six, I found a very difficult year on the field and off the field. We played a league match with Dr. Hawks on the Sunday. My dad was going in Sunday evening for a couple of points, and the, the rundown and and all the matches in Kerry that weekend. He said, "I'll talk to you tomorrow evening," and. He went off to work Monday. I went off to work. Typical Monday morning. He doesn't come home. As a family, we we tried to deal with it as best we could. We stuck together. We, you know, we had a large family there, and everybody kind of looked after everyone else. We had a really tough week that week. Um, family got through a lot. My mom was going through a lot. We were playing Dublin in a big league game in Killarney that weekend, and. I've shot my mum about it maybe on the Thursday evening. She said, uh, "You even match the weekend?" I said, "We do," and I said, "I'm not playing. I don't have the energy for it now after the week we're putting down." So she just said, "Look, I think Dad would like you to play in the match. He wouldn't want you not playing in a big match in Killarney." Hanig she she is because Hanig she is tough more far on it because we look tacky to carry with her on a vora lachas on on last on. I remember coming on that day and <laughs> the roar that I got in Killarney, you know, for, for a league match. The hairs in the back of your neck stand up and there's... There's emotion and maybe tears and there's there's lots of things going on. Again, with my first kick, then I I get a point and if I thought the first roar was big, the stand nearly comes after this. O'Sullivan pose the goalish. Colin Cooper tackle from Buggy in corner who's still. Cooper and Tarrant so not with a shot. So a shift score all in by Colin Cooper. A friend the board the air post score. It showed me that day that look, carry people have your back and they were all we were all grieving together and. We kind of get on with everything. It was great, you know. The supporters were fantastic, and it was great, you know, that um, he played in that day, and I think he meant a lot to us. Very she prevailed because he made she a whole person to take in because ah, can't agree if she is not going to stack more. I am one of those individuals anyway who keeps things inside. I probably don't show too much emotion sometimes. Um, I just like to keep things close to me and and the close the close knit people around me. So. Um, that's just part of my personality. I was very young at that time, you know, so I was probably immature, and I didn't know how long the grieving process would take. And I remember talking to Dr. Con Murphy, who's the who's the Cork doctor, who I formed a very good relationship with. He said it takes a couple of years, Colm. He said that to me. We were just we met just met socially, and I didn't really know what he meant at the time. But looking back now, I do. It takes time to get over. And I was always telling everyone I was fine and I was happy, but I wasn't really. There was a piece. There was a piece of me missing. Eventually, I came back to myself. It took a few months, and like I say, com completely it took a couple of years. But for me to find myself as a footballer and get back again, it took a few months. It comes to someone's door at every stage of their life. It probably came to mine a little bit younger, so I found it difficult to deal with. Derek Brian of Ian Rochach needs to learn his force. No the enemy is good, but Captain Harry Ravel is she. Just to manage to get Captain the phone to Declan Sullivan, a argentier lord to ask a draw his point to she. I took on the mantle of being captain, and I suppose between me not having form, next thing being asked the captain, 
maybe it, it, it could go two ways. It could inspire and give me the spark I need it, or it could add heaps and heaps of pressure. Declan was one of the greatest players I ever played with. So I knew it was only a matter of time for him to come back in, so I wanted to be able to hand it back to him intact. This time it's Darrell Shea who wins the kick out. Pursued there by Paul McGrain. 30 metres out. Up there is Moynihan. Played inside still by Brosnan. He's got it. For Stuart Gooch, when he's going to play a canister here in the market, he's going to play a canister. And he's going to play a cream for him. He's going to play a canister. He's going to play a canister. He's going to play a canister. He's going to play it was a great honour to Captain Kerry for those three games. Thankfully, we came through and we were back in another All Ireland final. September nights are closing in at the Kerry training camp in Killarney as the finishing touches are applied to preparations for Sunday's All Ireland football final against Mayo. Declan was selected for the All Ireland final. He found new form with the energy he was showing in training. I have so much admiration for Declan. If young players ever needed to look at something, it was that. He went away for a month, he trained his ass off. He got himself back in the Kerry team. It's also the sign of a great player when you're dropped. That you can go away, dust yourself down, find that spark and come back in and lead Kerry to another Ireland title because he gave an exhibition at the Park. Declan O'Sullivan, dished off inside to Donaghy, back, go! Mayo ripped apart, Declan O'Sullivan, the team captain, justifying his recall to the side. Every player has a different motivation, and for me, that day, it was it was kind of obviously for the team to win, but there was a family piece very much attached to that as well. That Jesus, you know what we've all gone through and the tough weeks and tough months that we've all had. At least this could bring us together a little bit, and we can all smile after and come together. And we we did that that evening in the hotel and the whole lot. Left or right, he's dynamic. It was just a really really sweet one to win. shown this year we lost his father Mike has been inspiration to all of us Mike has been a great supporter of this Kerry team in good times and in bad and I'm sure he's looking down today a very proud man Kerry are champions the Gooch and Declan O'Sullivan lifting Sam McGuire it's going to Kerry in 2006 Yere Cullimer na Croke gerecht e Gavile se schacht Agus vinna dar klaha kanis de globa mach e gunya rena hena krisha. Nira van an doiv an la ard hishin ach an dima farier. In ein oon in tar a tabish dachshin yir kolum a ard e hiri rist agus yeder dira kreb na hern a vinter mach dun tarn de blien as ichele. You need bad experiences to learn from, to really push you on. I always learn from him, and I think one of my strengths is I think I learned from him very quickly. The Gooch of 07 was a very serious man. He was a guy who knew what he wanted, and in 07, he was a challenge for anyone trying to mark him. The year before it was just such a struggle, and it was like I was playing with lead in my boots. But I'd become a new person in 12 months. And that spark was back, that swagger was back. And when you have that, it gives you so much confidence. You're a Yorkshire and Shell of Shinnevech and Drib Lord. More Haspanshi and Son in the skill of the Gags, we should go home to. Near Connick may in Roar Reeve, a rev co compor, less shell of, no less in the road. He was a deeply unselfish player, which was one of his greatest attributes. But there was a ruthlessness and a killer instinct to him. He had that from very early on. And what it became as the years went by was a really fierce competitiveness. Nor Forshe and Shelov, Nia Wangarev on Kuli V Avark all it blood, Yugake and Kuli Yella, Mar. I'd started football with Kerry when I was 18. Gone through a lot in those couple of years, and also maybe my dad dying so young that it just made me think a little bit is there more to life than football? 
an inter-county footballer. doesn't matter what level you're playing at. It's a four or five day week. That's the reality of it. You don't have a social life. You're basically cocooned in this bubble. It happened really soon after the All-Ireland. I talked to my manager and said, look, what are the chances of getting some leave? So I went to America for three months, based myself in Chicago. I just did things that I never had the opportunity to do. But it gave me just a release of what that life was like. Because a lot of my friends had immigrated to Australia or were going doing the 12-month thing or world travel or whatever it was. You know what, when I went away, it re-emphasised to me how, how much football was important to me. And playing with Kerry was, and playing with Dr Crooks was. And I was near ready to give that up. Dunn Hook Hopes, which is East Kerry Championship. In, so sometimes the, mo the hardest championships to win are the, the local ones against the local teams. Uh, because there's quite often skin and hair flying, as they say in Kerry. It's amazing what medals, when you spend all your life winning them, you don't even look at them too often. So there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's a nice few here, which is great. So that's the first one with Kerry, 2004. Um, very special one. Got man in a match that day, so. Fond memories of that. So one of the funnier medals I have is this one, which is actually a ring with the GA crest in the middle of it. Kieran Donnie has to take the credit for this one. In the NFL and the NBA, you get the rings for winning the championships. So Kieran, uh, back in 2014, it's engraved on the side of it as well. So everybody who won the All Ireland got, got got a ring. I think it's it's the one thing that we can say that over the, the 70s and 80s teams they definitely didn't win a ring anyway, but. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I could see myself going around the town like that. I should look at the more. That's the, that's the thing I'm thinking now as I, as I look at them. I should look at the more maybe and have a fuller appreciation of maybe the things we've achieved. The night that you collect these medals at the ceremony, it's kind of, it's like a release of air. The, okay, this is what it was all about. And it's maybe the sense of satisfaction that not every person in Kerry or Killarney or Ireland has these medals. But it's the journey that you will always remember. The clash of football's most consistent forces, Kerry and Tyrone, between them the winners of the last five All-Ireland titles. 2008, our Ireland final, Mickey comes to me at the start of the week and says, uh, you're going to be marking the Gooch. Saturday night, you're thinking, oh my God, I have to wake up tomorrow morning, I'm going to be marking one of the best players that's ever played Gaelic football in the Gooch in the Ireland final. It's kind of not a diary gooch ass, I guess, for you, Dina Kainter, I guess, not, not, not Dimmer Shagamar, Raven, I, Tyrone. Me and Team Lishin were still on the score of Shagodir, a fancy cohesion, I guess, in the score in the first shame. I've done my best that day, but he was, he was top of his game. He scored three magnificent points. And Cooper, the man who broke Tyrone's hearts many times in the past, gets off to a wonderful start here. I think the perception of gooch not doing against Tyrone is misguided. I think the reality is Kerry didn't do it against Tyrone, and that was the problem. Kerry trying to close it, trying to get men into key areas. Kavanagh kicking, having a go. It's over the bar! Sean Kavanagh puts Tyrone back in front in the All Ireland final. You earn All Ireland titles, and that's why I say you're never lucky you win All Irelands if you deserve them. Unfortunately, we didn't win that All Ireland, and again, it left a sour taste in our mouth. Three times now losing to Tyrone. Tyrone are the All Ireland football champions for 2008. 03, 05, and 08. They just weren't able to cope with Tyrone's intensity. And I think that was the story of that rivalry. That by the time they finally beat Tyrone in Championship, it was 2012. I don't think any of those Kerry players took huge value out of that win because they knew in the games that mattered, Tyrone were just that meaner beast and they were just that more ruthless than them. Sveshu Galiun to Nike Heroin, Dil Jack O'Connor, Marvani Storer, Hirin. Ach near Hostiga Harnut Sveshu Ganis, Marba Vailesh. Kerry at home to Sligo. People should say it's kind of formality that Kerry will win. We struggled hugely, could have been beaten. Chasing Clehen, I come to Schlegger, Kuigan Gooch, I guess Tomas, I guess Vider, Vider, Vicupi Puntica. 
Myself and Tomas went for a few pints, not together. Tomas was back in West Kerry, I was in Killarney. And we were supposed to, so look, I said, to hell with this, I'm going for a couple of pints in Killarney anyway, just to pull off some steam. We were dropped for the Antrim game in Tullamore. It was a little bit over the top, I, I felt. Kerry people might say, how could you and your Ireland with the two boys having a few pints? And, you know, I, and it's not the couple of pints that were in the world, but maybe there was a reaction that maybe they're not all together if the boys are going off away for pints, you know, so complete rubbish. So that's why you have to become a bit thick skinned and say, look, whatever's going on in the outside world, that's fine. But when we go into perform, if we're together and we'll show everybody in Crow Park how together we are. And I know in our tools to be in the harmony best to the Kirinish a blahu. When you're the clay canister here in the mach, clay a vech and a hog a darug, and I get gorse and corkig. That was as good as cock team as I played in 2009. They were they were buzzing, but we were just so determined. We were hurting team about some of the smart stuff that was written about us throughout the summer, some of the unfair criticism that we got, and we just left all that heart out in the field. great to win the All Ireland because there was a lot of pressure on us. I remember having, having a laugh at Tomas after he goes, thanks for the guy we won that All Ireland because we laugh. if we lost we would have been lynched, you know, so um, we had the final laugh in that. Sam Maguire goes back to Kerry. They are the winners. So we have a lot of people who are Cooper and Fire on Shaston. I guess Colin Medeirig and Harlan and Crave who are going to be in the Crowcrig I the tour tiger home and I wish in the stack. Certainly when my dad passed away, my mom went to a lot more matches with my sisters and they encouraged her to not just sit at home and listen to the radio, to actually come and enjoy things that little bit more. I had won it in 2000 with a team of hardened veterans and I was the baby in the team. In 2010, I knew that I had to be the senior figure, or at least one of them. So maybe my mom had felt some of that pressure as well, so when we finally landed it, it was, it was special. That's probably one of my favourite pictures, and I have it at home, and probably one of the most important pictures I have in family life and in sporting life. Mar hora er vuna gro kuchu greve chunte round niuch kolum mar chapte en hiri dimli en gavi lese heniug. Vuna dr kla he kanish elamach en aiga clear and trusta achtra la kartvion. You're looking at guys crying around you, losing an all Ireland final day in Crow Park, even though there's eighty thousand people, is the loneliest place you can be. Agus ní raibh dheir díonta é gá he clí agus fóilio. Hogan dá irn é gur ich éil ríst é gá he lach anis na hirn é gá vil is tri díag. Football had changed spectacularly over the last three or four years, and now he was sitting in the pocket as a centre forward, and he was just magnificent. It was a new, fresh challenge and something that I embraced. What a pass from Colin Cooper! Stóch a bhí un ar na dúis, conas na bróg sé sé. Ach, Vishay, just no taller fad. The kick pass in a bog of Vishay Khrushchev, Lehedi Donaka. He rev black lean on, stop Khrushchev. To me, that's really where he showed how good a football he is that he can adapt from a corner forward to playing Shanta half forward for a playmaker role. You saw the full array of his skills in that first half, particularly. It's been the game. Dublin were in the midst of their golden generation. For air, Boyg Blackley and Nasan Acha, we is count as the book for Inti, and Kahesan now, Kiahamas, we good. On the back of 2013, I was freewheeling because things were coming so easy and effortless for me because. My football was so sharp. I was strong. I trained really well before that Castle Bar game, probably as good as I've done going into the semi-final. 
we were confident as a bunch. We were saying we're a couple of years older, we're wiser, we're more experienced. But it just goes to show in life, and I never got an injury in my life. It just goes to show it, it can go like that. Ten minutes into the Ireland semi-final, cruciate, gone. Fractured my knee as well in the same incident. We were all above and um, do you know the minute he hit the ground we knew he was in trouble. We kind of had an inkling that there was something seriously wrong. Everything, go, everything goes up in smoke. Possibly my career and, and folks' dream of winning an Ireland club. It looked like there was no return. For me, it'd be both. It's very kind of strange that year that I got injured in February and my mom had got sick then in March um, and her, her health was deteriorating. My problems were very small considering what, what she was going through. So um, it was a particularly tough couple of months for, for, for the whole family, really, to be fair. My mother wasn't the type of lady that would leave that get her down. She was you know, a strong willed woman and uh, would keep going and could say, look, that she's fine and she to tip away and on, keep working away. You kind of you rally as much as you can and there's, stre there's stress on everything, but um, unfortunately she passed away then in August. That was a tough time, that was, that, that was tough and it's difficult when you lose someone close to you like that. So yeah, I probably needed to carry, to carry peace more than ever. It is, of course, All-Ireland Football Final Weekend. Kerry, the most prolific county in the history of Gaelic football, are preparing to take on the Ulster champions. Yes, and Eamon asked me to tag out because I was able to do all the warm-up stuff. And he didn't tell me until the morning. He goes, we have a jersey if you like. So I was 28 out of nowhere. Through that tough summer I had, Eamon felt for me that it would be good for me to be part of the group, spending the night before with them and contributing in meetings and things. You still feel like you're there, you know. You still feel like you're playing. The only thing is you can't get out there, you know, no matter what you want to do. We should come out and see him Rory. He's driven to the finish, and I'm doing a goal. Clean them, so we should work hard, them, chore them. Him Rory four in the bag. Just so much joy at the end of that, you know. For all the guys, the effort. It was the first all on the medal for a lot of those players. So to play just even any little part of that, it was, it was, it was special, particularly after the year that we've had. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank my own club, Dr. Crooks, for giving myself and Theon such a fantastic honour to captain this young Kerry side in the absence of our inspirational leader, Colin Le Gouch Cooper. Dil Colum er fakna himra le Kerry Ravil Sakur Diog. Ach nuna vader Graham or Hakliya or Sam a squealer. All over! Dublin have won the Ireland for 2015. Agus Ben Skiel Kiena Arishte a Ravil Sashediak. Peter Crowley in front of him, McManaman slipped. Very difficult angle. And he's nailed it. Come off my injury as well, I was, all, I was thinking, jeez, am I, am I good enough for this level anymore? Am I really showing it? Do I still have the game for this? Going back to Croaks. It was always a medicine for me, particularly if you'd last. Pat O'Shea had set out to start of the year not to win the county championship, but to win the All Ireland. But O'Shea is that kind of evangelical presence in Dr. Crokes. He was a coach for Go when Gooch was that high. So what Pat O'Shea says, people listen to. You've got to remember that to play in Croke Park, you're going to have to be dedicated, train hard. Many of the players that have gone before you have all gone through the same route. That was the goal that he had to try and win an All-Ireland Club Championship with Dr Crokes. It was um, one of the few medals he hadn't won and you know, he was determined to give that as much of a, a lash as he could with the short space of time he'd left. Getting to the final, we've been down this road before. We had come up short against Cross McLean and we'd come up short in a few semi-finals. 
And it was a cold, dreary day against Slough Neil, who had been knocking around themselves to try and win North Ireland, and they felt it was their time. And even early on, things were, were dodgy for us. Towards the end of the game, then we kept the ball when we needed to do it. And I think it was a sideline underneath the Hogan stand, and I knew the inbound pass was the most important part because Morris Deegan was refereeing him. And I said, if we get this into Crooks guy, I can't, there's only a couple of seconds, it's probably gone. Whereas if, if, if we kicked it in and we lost it, he might give them a chance. So I just said, I'm going to take this and just take a bit of responsibility and play a little pass to Johnny Buckley. And before it even got to Johnny Buckley, the whistle went. I remember Pat O'Shea just being next to him and he jumping on top of him. I thought he'd actually nearly kill him. He caught him and, you know, it was just fantastic, just raw emotion. It was magical. Sí, sí, es Patty Yeskind, Lechele, no, 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 The pictures and the actions speak louder than any words could, and there wasn't a happier boy in the world that said that day than, than, than me, and find, finally landed the, the medal I cherish so much. We were over just at the side of the field, and it was great, you know, at that stage to meet him, and um, it was a very emotional time. I think they understand what it meant to me. So that's why it became all that kind of emotional and kind of tears and <laughs> different things that go on. So it wasn't my story. It was the Dr. Croke story and the story of the whole group and the trials and tribulations and the defeats and the injuries and the setbacks we all have had in our career. It was probably the most the most special time, certainly in the, uh, Dr. Croke's jersey, but probably probably one of the most special in my whole career that we, find, we finally landed the one we really wanted. That was my most difficult medal to win. It took me 20 years to win it, but it's amazing when you show it in that size, what it means so much. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a special one because that was the one missing from the collection as well before I retired. So um, yeah, it's great to have it. That's probably one of my most cherished ones. Session lay started with Chinlish the Crokig, Dairy Colomas Marimidor, Idrahunte. Nistian in Vlinchen, Rachtolach Iha Orame the Holum, Honahel Kemul Pele Helura, and Hedo Kaitale Haid, a Agriach de Midor, the Hudden CLG. Rainach and Tarigat Gnohir, Er Holum, Agazer Rohom and Karhanachta. The light of it turned out to be a great night, the first time it was ever done, and I accept people of different views on it. Um, that's, that's completely fine. But what kind of disappoints me in some shape or form is that by having a testimony or something that's going to bring down the whole GA, it's not going to happen. I think what we've seen with it is it was a precedent and he took the fire and he took the heat for setting the precedent of having a testimony. I can see a lot more of this type of thing happening. People can begrudge if they do well out of it. That's fine, but I don't begrudge anybody for players who are going out, but in so much time, fair play to them, in my opinion. The one thing that I got to realise with him is that he's not led anywhere he doesn't choose to go. Everyone talks about how nice he is, and he's an absolute gent, but you couldn't be the footballer that he became without having a steely edge, without being able to stand up for yourself, and without being able to say, I'll do it my way, and he did it his way. I'm a G A person and I always will be, I always will be, so if I'm like Bracker and Eddie O'Connor and all these guys who are go going to matches now and still getting the enjoyment and buzz out of it, I still see the fun and the banter that those guys have um, and if I'm doing it at their age I'd be, I'd be a very happy man. It was great to have somebody like that as I noticed you. He was absolutely fantastic and he had never forgotten where he came from now. He'd always say that we were speaking to him, he'd always say that like that. He's a clan man, Arch and the Bowler man, and we'll always be Arch and the Bowler man, no matter where he'd go. Like. And what about yourself? What about your ambitions? 
Well, hopefully I'll go on and win a couple of county titles as well. Ta on bound, the Via Tastana, Hullam Cooper, Portugal. And one place of courage and hopefully. Beautiful fluency, taking on Kelly, he can get a goal here, and he does. This young man is. All of a sudden, he's become one of the most talked about young players. In